Welcome to Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. This video is going to give you an in-depth look at the resort at Walt Disney World along with Grand Destino Tower, which sits on the same property recently built at Disney. I'm gonna show you some of the best places to go for food, maybe want a quick coffee, just browsing around, or maybe you're here for a convention, whatever it may be, this video is gonna give you an in-depth look at this incredible resort. Let's go ahead and start move, making our way through here. You'll see this is where you'll get dropped off if maybe you're taking a bus or ride share to uh, Coronado Springs. They'll take you right here to this main entryway. You'll notice the cactuses all around here. And speaking of cactuses, believe it or not, Coronado Springs is a celebration of the unique blend of Spanish, Mexican, and Southwest American cultures. You'll be able to see that throughout the resort as we go through here. Seating outside, those really large pillars, and you'll notice kind of like a yellowish and brown theme throughout that kind of ties all of these themes together. Love looking up at the ceiling as I make my way into Coronado Springs' lobby. Keep in mind, this is the original lobby, not the new Grand Estino lobby, so a little bit different. There's that fountain, and I wanna note there are a couple directions you can go here. We're gonna start by going immediately to the right. Now, the right is gonna take us to Grand Estino Tower first. Not to worry, we're gonna come back to this main part of the resort, and I'm gonna take you through the other side as well. So we're just kinda gonna go in different directions here. But let's start off by going to the Grand Estino Tower side. Now, as you make your way to towards Grandestino Tower, if you're coming in through this entrance. You'll notice there are family games on the right and left of us, chess and checkers, areas to sit down, relax. They even have phone chargers there at those little desks. So if you are running out of power on your phone, you can go ahead and stop in there and charge your phone. Now we're gonna make our way quickly here through Grandestino Tower hallway, if you will, as we're making our way that it actually connects the two, Coronado Springs and Grandestino Tower. Now on the right-hand side, as we walk through here quickly, you'll notice there are these um, kind of courtyard areas, usually reserved for private events. So if you're here for a convention and you're looking for some courtyard somewhere and you're not 100% sure, it could be the courtyard kind of in between where those uh, glass doors were as you walk through that hallway there. Now as you make our way down here to the end of the hallway, you'll notice a mirror there with some really cool elevators. I'm going to show you those in just a moment, but you'll notice the artwork is starting to change. There's a Mickey Dandelion right there. Very cool. And we make our way into the grand feeling, Grand Destino. You'll notice the really high ceiling, great pillars right there. And then as promised, some of the best coffee I've tried on property, Walt Disney property, Barcelona Lounge right here. You'll notice the timing of this does vary. So it closes, I think, at noon. Tough to actually see. Is it 6.30? I think 6.30 a.m. to noon every day, Barcelona Lounge. Then I think it opens back up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon if you want some uh, coffee. I recommend the Cafe Bonbon. Bon. Truly delicious. Very nice mirror right there at the ceiling. Again, these gigantic pillars. It's a cool piece of artwork behind me, which we will uh, see momentarily. You'll notice to the right and left, there's great seating areas for the whole family. You can charge your phone here too. They have different uh, phone chargers throughout. Again, uh, taking note of the carpet and the flooring, the artwork all around, it has definitely changed as you go from Coronado to Grand Estino Tower. We're kind of going uh, reverse a little bit just so you can get an idea from the inside. And we're going to go outside, which is, uh, I think, a unique way to look at it. But we're going up these stairs here. Right at the top of the stairs, uh, right where it's kind of like red back there with those small desks, this is the reception area. So if you're checking in to the resort, that is where you're likely going to go first. You're going to come through the doors and turn right. To the left, you'll notice there's another seating area. We're going to see that in a moment. A great area for gathering and kind of meeting friends. If uh, maybe a larger family is meeting here, don't be afraid to take pictures with this cool kind of uh, lamp, lamp selfie, I'm going to call it. Lamp wall? Lamp wall. I think that's a good name for it. Really cool selfie spot. So we walk outside here. This is where you'll pull up if you're staying at Grand Destino Tower. Again, for ride sharing and uh, some smaller... Um, buses or vans, but the big buses are actually going to meet you at a kind of loading area off and to the right. I'm going to show you that in just a moment as we make our way out here. There is a nice little kind of viewing area outside here at Grand Destino Tower. We're going to walk out here just a moment and just take a quick look around so I can show it to you. Again, that's where the buses are right down there to the right, little water area, places to sit down and relax, maybe take a picture in front of the resort. Then we're just going to go back inside. Again, I kind of want to show you as we walk to the door here, I'm going to turn left. This is that pathway that'll take you down to the buses. If you're going to the parks, we're going to another spot, that walkway right down there, that's how you get to the bus. It's very important to note that if you're trying to get, hey, where's that bus? Pick me up. Trying to get to a park, trying to go somewhere else, that's where it is. Again, walking in to the lobby here, you remember we, we came in from the right side, now we're going left. Nice seating area here. It does look like another reception area, but it's actually not used for that. It's used for just kind of a seating, maybe conference gathering area. Again, this is a convention or the, the primary convention resort at Walt Disney World. Now, as we continue to make our way here, you'll notice we're now these really cool elevators. If you've been to, uh, I feel like it's becoming more common nowadays, but if you've been to Vegas or other places like that, you'll notice these buttons are here on the outside of the elevators where you actually choose where you want to go. And then the elevator bank here tells you 
which elevator to take. We're taking elevator A to take us down to the lower level. And, you know, uh, for those who have seen it before, it's not super exciting, but this is actually the only one of its kind at Walt Disney World at this moment. So for some, it's like, oh, this is very exciting. These elevators are unique. And there's no buttons inside because it's telling you where it's taking you on this little uh, blue panel on the inside of the door. You'll notice the theming kind of continues to follow along here in the elevator as well. Kind of the lamp wall looking floor tiles below us. I thought that was a really cool design cue that uh, that Disney had for this resort. And we are now at that elevator bank that took us uh, kind of the lower level of Grandestino Tower. I'm going to walk you through just so you can see that Mickey artwork that a lot of people love here in the lobby area. And then we're going to go ahead and make our way outside because this is uh, most of the main lobby area before we make our way to those uh, rooms, rancheros, and etc. So here's that artwork. There's Walt and Mickey. Love it. Now we're going to make our way outside as promised. This is the lower level of Grandestino Tower where you can go outside and experience some of the amenities and get out to your room if you are staying at uh, Coronado Springs. You'll notice there are a lot of areas and around Dr. Chairs for sitting back, relaxing, maybe grabbing a coffee, part of your convention, or if you're just staying here. They also have uh, fun games, which we're going to come up to in just a moment, and areas to sit back and relax. I really love coming out here after grabbing a coffee from the Barcelona Lounge and just sitting in one of these Anirondack chairs and enjoying. It's just such a really, really nice view of the resort, great way to kind of relax, especially, you know, you do see a lot of conventioners here, so if you are planning on staying here on vacation, it should, I want to keep, I'm going to say it a couple times now, it is a convention resort, so depending on when you're here, there may be a convention going on. So you can see larger than life checkers right there along with chess and then you have uh, more seating and more areas to sit back and relax now this is actually Coronado Springs is one of the largest resorts at Walt Disney World it is enormous more more rooms than I think any other room or any other excuse me resort at Walt Disney World tons and tons of rooms and buildings and it shows as you walk all around this resort there's tons of areas to, uh, to walk around, and you'll notice it as we make our way here. I'm going to speed up the footage just a bit here because it is a very long walk. You'll notice right back there we have some of the uh, buildings for staying in. It's just, it boggles the mind how large this resort is. It's extremely big. Uh, and when you're taking the bus around this resort, it's uh, it also is noted because there is a, an internal bus as well. Here's that lake right there and one of my favorite dining locations, which we're going to come up to momentarily. Remember, rooms on the right and on the left, you'll find the signs that will direct you as you're walking around the resort. But that is Three Bridges or Villa del Lago ahead of us. And to our right is the dig site. We're actually going to go into the dig site from the uh, far left side of it. It's be only a couple steps away. You'll notice they have a full-sized volleyball court with the volleyball balls right Right there, which is nice. So you can uh, enjoy. There's a poolside bar here that also serves food. And of course, that very special pool to the right. This is that uh, Mayan pool. You may have seen it before with the steps and the water raining down from the steps. For those who know history, the water raining down is uh, homage to something else, but <laughs> we don't have to get into the historical piece of it. It definitely looks nice to look at it. No question about it. Really, really nice, beautiful spot. Remember, it's for those who are staying at the resort. So if you're just there, maybe visiting for a convention, this is just for those who are staying there. You'll notice they have ping pong on the left. I'm going to get to the arcade in a moment. There's a kid's play area across the way here. We'll notice it kind of follows, uh, I'll say, a South American or Mexican feel. Uh, you know, the theming is really well done at Coronado. And you'll notice on the left-hand side here, here's a shuffleboard, right? There's that green kind of cover that's all shuffleboard. It's a unique way of playing. Instead of on a cruise ship, you're playing out here in uh, in the sunshine, which is pretty cool. Then I found this little face here, which <laughs> is very, definitely uh, had a very cool feel to it. So kids can play all around this area. It's a great spot. There's the shuffleboard board again. We're making our way towards the arcade. So the arcade is a little bit hidden here at Coronado Springs. It's behind the ping pong tables and to and kind of behind the uh, pool bar as well. It's Explorer's Playground is what we just left. Now we're going to the arcade, which is, um, it's small. It is very, very small for the size resort it is. But keep in mind, it, it really depends on which resort you're staying at, which will determine uh, the size of the arcade. So clearly Disney does not expect a lot of kids to come into the arcade at Coronado Springs, but you'll notice it is incredibly small, especially compared to ones like uh, Contemporary Resort or Port Orleans French Quarter. So Guitar Hero, they've got racing games, ping pong, but that's about it. Just kind of the bare minimum at uh, Coronado Springs. I have no doubt that, uh, you know, if you want to play more of the arcade games, you should go to one of the other resorts, that's for sure. Now we're going to make our way out of the pool area, but as we do, I want to show you restrooms on the right, noted, and straight ahead, this is a resort refillable station. So if you are getting one of those resort refillable mugs, you can either wash your mug here and get a refill of your favorite drink. Again, the pool bar 
pretty crowded, as you'll notice. Uh, to the right, there's a big line for those who want to uh, grab some food there. And it is a pretty hot day when we were here. So pool area has areas for sitting down, relaxing. Of course, uh, all the amenities that you would expect. We're going to go ahead and speed it up at this point. As we make our way out of the dig site here, we're just going to continue walking around and turning to the right. The, the entire resort is a giant circle. So as you walk through, you'll see that you can just go around and around and around. We're actually going to cut through here to the left. You could continue on straight, which I'm showing you there, but we're going to cut through. So if we continued going straight, you would just follow that circle all the way around. When you take one of these bridges across the waterway, Way, it's uh, it kind of is a cut through to the other side. That is how expansive this resort is. It is enormous. Now we are here at Three Bridges or Villa del Lago, one of my favorite dining locations here at Walt Disney World. It's a very unique one because they don't really have reservations for it, right? They or they they hadn't for a while. A lot of it's walk up reservations, uh, and the reason for that is because it is meant for the conventioners, for those who are staying at Coronado Springs. If you have the opportunity and you're here and you can try some of the food, I do recommend it. The burger here is outstanding, but it should be noted that this location does not open until the afternoon. So it's a little uh, early in the day, so it is closed at the moment, but you can check out the menu. I also want to note that we are that we can make our way in three directions, <laughs> three bridges, of course. So you can make your way in three directions using the bridge system here at Villa del Lago or three bridges. Imagine what it was like before they put the bridges in place. So this is this has definitely made a big difference in terms of Coronado and being able to get around. So instead of having to go all the way across by making the circle, you can just cut through using one of the very, very helpful bridges. Now we're going to go ahead and turn back the way we came. And instead of going across the same bridge we just went across, we're going to go across the other one and turn left here. I speed it up just a bit. Nice fountains right in the middle. Let's go ahead and make our way across this bridge. And this is where you'll find a lot of those resort rooms. Again, the rooms are all over. You couldn't even get close to uh, trying to figure out exactly, well, if you could look it up, but you could see how far back a lot of these buildings go. They're just ex so expansive, so many rooms, thousands and thousands of guests can stay here. So it's uh it's a pretty big spot. It really, really is. Now, I do want to mention the dig site is not the only pool on property. There are other pools throughout this resort as well. We're actually making our way to one now. You'll notice there's waterway on the left. Don't go in the water. It's full of snakes and gators, as we know in Florida. That should be noted. If you're not, if you're new to Florida, haven't been here in a while, yes, don't go in the natural water. Snakes and gators are in there. This is just one of the uh, many pools that they have around the resort, just for those who maybe want more of a relaxing experience. It's not nearly as crowded, but there's not as much to do at this pool. So that's, uh, that's an important note. Now we're going to go ahead and continue the circle here around Coronado Springs. You'll notice there are areas to sit back, relax in these chairs. Again, there's a lot of these just kind of out of the way chairs for you to sit back, relax, maybe spend time with friends, family, or perhaps colleagues if you are here for, again, one of those conventions. So the, uh, we are Casitas 3 now, making our way around. All these buildings just have a number associated with them or the rancheros. So it, uh, it depends on where you're staying. But again, we can see the circular view of the of the resort as you make your way around it's, it's so big it's it's uh, amazing how big this resort is it really really is all right continuing around here really beautiful spot it, it's uh it's very sunny so there's not super amounts of shade here to sit back and relax but it is uh, very very nice if you have the opportunity to stay in one of the buildings i'd recommend the one on your right i think that's casitas one it's close to everything but if you can't and that is common uh, staying in one of the other buildings is just as good. Now, I'm going to slow the footage down again as we make our way towards the main building again. So we're at the other side of that main building. This is Maya Grill on our right. I'm going to show you that in more detail in just a moment. But there's a nice seating area out here, and they have a lot more chairs right by the main building. So if you're looking for a meetup spot for friends or family, this is a really good spot right by some of these main buildings, whether it be inside or out, one of the uh, main dining spots or the quick service spot. Either way, you're going to be in good shape. Again, we are right outside of the main building at this point. The main building meaning the old main building for Coronado Springs. A lot of people like to think of Grandestino Tower as the main building, but this building on the right is the main building. Just don't want you to get confused if you're thinking about visiting Coronado Springs. Now to the left, there's an area to sit back, relax under these chairs. They have a bar right over there by the waterway. Again, you cannot go in this water. It is all natural water. You do not want to go in the natural water in Florida. Again, there are animals in there. You don't want to go in there. 
uh, seating to the right as well, and there's a there's a ramp as well if you're using a mobility scooter or wheelchair. You can get down to that uh, viewing area and the chairs if you want to. Now let's go inside El Centro, the main building at Coronado Springs. We we saw this building when we first walked in. I'm going to kind of show you from the other side now. So we went to the right as we walked in, and we're coming out of the center door. So right across the way now is how we came in. Right there's that fountain. The fountain should be the reference point. We're going to go to the gift shop now, where you'll find some of the very unique gifts at they have at Coronado Springs. Now I could go over everything that you could possibly find at any of these resorts, but instead I think the best way to kind of approach this one is to go over the Coronado Springs specific items that you can only find here. Some of them include one of my favorite restaurants, Villa del Lago. They even have a hat and shirt combo for it now, which is pretty cool. I do like those a lot. Again, that restaurant is outstanding. You kind of a unique look. You're not going to find this anywhere else except for Coronado Springs because you, you guessed it, it's only at Coronado Springs. <laughs> okay, we got it. They have unique bags and uh, shirts, hats, as you'd imagine. Things that you can find in other parts of Walt Disney World as well. A lot of people having a really good time walking through uh, this gift shop for sure. Now, as we make our way over here, you'll notice they have some of the themed items for Coco. Now, they took a lot of these items for Coco, of course, because it goes along with the theme of the resort extremely well. So you got ears, you got colorful... Um, colorful animals, which you can color in yourself, different shirts, and so much more kind of themed with Coco. So you can find a, a very, really, really big mix from Coco to Three Caballeros to just kind of general Mexican, South American kind of vibe overall. So you're going to find a, a wide mix of gifts if you're thinking about bringing back something for someone, and they do change the, uh, the gifts that they have here and the merchandise from time to time. So keep an eye out for it. There are those glasses again as you make your way through. Now we're gonna turn left. So we came through the door straight ahead. We're going left now towards the other part of Coronado Springs, so the original OG part of Coronado Springs. To our left here, you'll find the quick service kind of pastry shop. You can go come here first thing in the morning for coffee or pastry or maybe cereal, refill your drinks. But later on in the day, as you'll notice, uh, with the gates here, it is closed. So it closes kind of or middle of the day for them to clean and change a couple things out. But early in the day is, is the primary time for uh, for this spot right here. Now we're getting to some of those great restaurants along with Villa del Lago or Three Bridges. Cafe Rick's. Cafe Rick's, in my opinion, is a truly underappreciated restaurant here at Walt Disney World. If you have the opportunity, I would recommend this one or Villa del Lago. You can see they're even trying to advertise it just a bit. They have some delicious, there's a Reuben sandwich that I had there. That it was out of this world amazing. It's, it is bar food. That should be noted. It's a great bar, by the way. It's kind of got a, an open vibe with kind of a Mexican feel. This uh, menu is flashing just a bit, but you can uh, find the menu online as well anytime. Again, you can check in with any of the uh, hostesses there, and they'll be able to help you out. Now, here's where you can find the main convention center. If you're staying here for a convention, this is where you'll likely spend a lot of your time. I noticed they had a coin machine over here by the convention center. I figured I'd go ahead and check it out just for a moment for those who love the coins, the press pen here at uh, Disney, just so you have reference. But now we're going to the main uh, quick service dining experience. Now, most resorts at Walt Disney World have a quick service dining experience it's some, it, to some degree, at least. But Mercado's was actually recently re redone. So it's uh, it kind of encompasses a lot of the food that you'd find maybe if you're thinking of like a Mexican or South American feel for food, it definitely does kind of bring along some of those, those feelings with it. So the food here used to not be very good. I'll be totally honest with you here. Really was not the best. I would actually recommend it. Highly recommend not going there. But now that they've changed it, the food has gotten a little bit better. I mean, is it the best at Disney? <laughs> Not by a long shot. And I feel like, and this is really interesting, the prices here are truly, in my opinion, higher than most of the quick service dining you'll find around Walt Disney World. Now, do they do this just because it's a convention resort? I don't know. Or maybe they've just raised the prices for everything on this day. But either way, it just it seemed extremely expensive for, uh, for what you're getting here at uh, the quick service spot. So they have pastries as well, as you would imagine, and you can fill up your uh, resort refillable mug. But in my opinion, a spot that yeah, you can go if you like, but it definitely is not worth going out of your way for. It's a quick service spot. If you gotta stop for food real fast, it, go ahead, but otherwise I'd wait for something else. Now, as we exit Mercado's here, uh, you'll notice we're gonna turn to our left here. This is the last piece of the resort that we have not seen yet, and this is the Maya Grill. Now, Maya Grill has not been as 
I don't know, widely publicized as many of the other restaurants at Walt Disney World. And uh, some people have a tendency to get lost in this area, but there are restrooms back there too, I should note. But um, this this grill is, is good. It's not great. I would, again, not go out of my way for it. Disney's got to make some changes to this spot. That, again, I think it has to do with the fact that it is a convention resort. The theming, though, is outstanding. I love the theming. Really, really cool. You can see kind of like a Mayan feel throughout the whole thing, even those chairs, the torches up above, the seating area. Really, really nice. I love the theming. They just need to improve the food just a bit. You can see the Mayan uh, priests right there kind of making their way into the restaurant. Very, very cool how they've done this resort. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you're thinking about staying at Coronado Springs, I hope this video was helpful to you if you're thinking about it. Overall, a fun experience and a great place to visit, stay, or just maybe go to a convention. Thanks so much for being a part of it with me, and a special thanks to our Patreon production team for making all of our videos possible. Until next time, have a magical day. I'll see you real soon.